This is the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome Podcast. I am your host, Laurie Henderson. Join me on this journey into the world of manga, where a river of reviews flow through caverns of commentary down into the latest news. Welcome to the Manga Dome. Episode 34, Manga Gift Guide 2013. New licenses from Seven Seas. Seven Seas Entertainment went on another licensing binge prior to the Thanksgiving holiday. They announced six, count them, six new licenses. Granted, only one of them was from a new series, and the other five are related to other ongoing or already announced titles, but that's still a lot from this publisher. Their first title was I Am Alice, Body Swap in Wonderland. With how well the Alice in the Country of titles have been doing for them, it's not surprising for them to license another Alice-related title. In this version, a boy named Makoto takes his little sister to the library. He chooses a picture book and not only gets sucked into the book, but he appears in Wonderland as a girl, Alice. As he journeys through Wonderland, he meets all the usual suspects. The White Rabbit and Cheshire Cat with requisite ears, the Mad Hatter in military uniform, and the King of Hearts. The series is based on a mobile dating sim with the character designs and resulting manga drawn by Ayumi Kano, the creator of another Seven Seas title, Dictatorial Grimore. It is currently at three volumes and will be published here beginning in September of 2014. I got my fill of Bishonen Alice in the Wonderland characters with Alice in the Country of, and the gender swap really doesn't do anything for me. I'm passing on this one. The first license to get a boost was Strike Witches. It got three new additions to the Seven Seas Library. The Sky That Connects Us follows various members of the 501st after it was disbanded following the destruction of the Neroi Hive in Galia. It bridges the stories between the first and second anime. It is one volume and will be published in June of 2014. Strike Witch's 1937 Fuso Sea incident follows Mio Sakamoto as she trains to be a witch with Fumika Kitago. The story will then shift into a telling of the Fuso Sea incident, a battle early in the war, which later becomes a propaganda movie in series. This is a two-volume series with the first volume scheduled to come out in August 2014. Strike Witches One Wing Witches takes place in 1943, just before the beginning of the first anime series. It follows Wilma Bishop and her experiences after joining the Isle of Wight detachment group. It also gives a lot of background information on several characters. This is another two-volume series, with Volume 1 to be released in January 2015. The War on Pants continues its never-ending battles, though these volumes seem to do a lot to flesh out the Strike Witches universe. Fans of the series will want to grab these, but I won't be among them. I like pants. The second series to get a boost was Haganai, I Don't Have Many Friends. Now, with 50% more fail, is a one-volume collection of short stories about the members of the Neighborhood Club and their relationship to each other. This volume will be released in July 2014. Club Minutes is also a one-volume collection of short stories, this time detailing the club's activities. This volume will be released in November 2014. I haven't had a chance to read this series yet, so I'm not writing these two off. They have a much better chance of my reading them than the other two titles, and being one-shots up their chances even higher. I'll wait and see on these editions. Seven Seas has really been getting ahead of itself with its announcements of licenses leading out into 2015. While none of these titles are long, indeed most of them are one to two volumes only, they should be careful not to get fan expectations up too high. When I hear new license announcement and it just turns out to be the same announcement announced months earlier, it's beginning to feel more like Crying Wolf, or Crying License in this case. The VizManga.com update. Over at VizManga, Top 10 for the week of November 18th, 2013, Shonen Edge is up on the list, as well as there being a new number one. For its debut week, Nisekoi Volume 6 jumps straight to the top, coming in at number one. Naruto Volume 63 falls one to number two, and Yu Yu Hakusho moves up one, both in volume and in spots, as Volume 4 comes in at number three. Shoujo Skip Beat jumps 5 as Volume 12 comes in at number 4, and Aishi Teruze Baby Volume 2 debuts at number 5. Gimmick Volume 2 sneaks its way in at number 6, and the Yu-Gi-Oh! train continues with Millennium World Volume 4 coming in at number 7, and Volume 5 at number 8. 
Hanakimi Volume 21 comes in at number 9, and Tale of the Moon Volume 9 ends the list, coming in at number 10. Only one new print and digital title survived the list this week, with Naruto hanging in the top five. Nisekoi is technically new, even if it is digital only. That leaves four-fifths of the list to older titles. Does this mean more people come to the site for the older titles, but still want their newer titles in print? The fact that new releases don't last as long as older titles makes me think that that's so. Over at the New York Times bestseller list for the week of November 23, 2013, Yen Press has managed another shakeup of both the list and what's at the top. Debuting on the list this week is The Girl with the Green Hair, Yotsuba, Volume 12, at number 1. Yu-Gi-Oh! 5 D's gets pushed down one to number two, which in turn pushes Naruto Volume 63 down one to number three. Soul Eater Volume 17 slashes its way in at number four, while Attack on Titan Volume 1 hangs on again to number five and is followed by Attack on Titan Volume 8, which falls three to number six. Soulless Volume 3 debuts at number seven, while Monster Musume Volume 1 holds out at number eight. Attack on Titan Volume 2 returns at number 9, and Alice in the Country of Hearts, The Mad Hatter's Late Night Tea Party Volume 1, falls 6, the most on the list this week, to land at number 10. I guess Yen Press really is making a mark in the manga market. A lot of their titles can wreak havoc on the top 10 list. It shouldn't be a surprise that Yotsuba can climb over everyone to stand at the top, and I'm totally for a soul list making it on its first week. I love that series. We're back to three titans wandering around, and Monster Masumi has reached its sixth week on the list. It may get bounced up and down, but it just can't seem to get pushed over completely. Manga Gift Guide for 2013 I've done gift guides in the past. I passed on it last year, but in 2010 and 2011, I had suggestions for different kinds of readers in your life. Check the show notes for links. I decided to do one again this year, so here are suggestions for 12 types of people in your life that you might want to give the gift of manga to. The non-manga reader. It's never easy to find something for that one person who claims to not get manga or who obsesses over the whole big eyes thing. For them, there is a bride story. This series from creator Keiyu Mori takes place in the 19th century along the Silk Road. Through different characters that are connected through Englishman Mr. Smith, the reader is introduced to different cultures through their customs of finding or becoming brides. The story is fascinating and the art is absolutely gorgeous. There are no super powerful heroes or supernatural beings falling for the average girl. Just beautiful storytelling with the art to match. It is published by Yen Press and there are currently five hardback volumes available. The Manga About Manga Lover Going to the other extreme is that person who loves manga and even wants to make their own. Bakuman is just a series for them. It's about junior high school kids Moritaka, Mashiro, and Akito Takagi and their 10-year journey to become successful manga creators in Shonen Jump. This series gives a lot of insider information about the manga industry in Japan and shows just how much work and non-glamorous it can be. It can be just as exciting and filled with tension as any shonen manga without the constant training montages. It is available from Viz Media and is complete at 20 volumes. It is also available in print, digital, and a complete box set. For the sci-fi lover, finding manga for the sci-fi lover, especially hard sci-fi, can be hard but Knights of Sidonia is able to fit the bill perfectly. It follows Nagate Tanikaze, a young man who is found in the depths of the Sidonia, a seed ship that is searching for a place for humanity to settle away from the Ghana, a seemingly unintelligent hive mind that has destroyed Earth and even now seems determined to wipe out humanity from the universe. It is a realistic take on what hundreds of years out in space would be like, the toll it takes on resources and supplies. It is gritty and the ship is designed for function instead of appearance. There is an evolution of humanity in cloning and everything is explained in a plausible manner. It is from Vertical Inc. and there are currently five volumes available. For the Mecha sci-fi lover, if there were a niche of sci-fi fans, the Mecha fan would be it. Mobile Suit Gundam was the first series to take mecha seriously and use them in a realistic way. Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin is a retelling of the original Gundam series written and illustrated by one of the original creators, Yoshikazu Yashiko. Humanity has expanded out into space, living in satellites called Sides. One side, calling itself the Principality of Zeon, 
decides to declare independence from Earth, which leads to the One Year War. The series takes place six months after a truce is declared, though hostilities still persist. It follows the crew of the White Base, a new carrier for the Earth forces as it tries to bring civilians of a destroyed side to safety. The series is presented in an omnibus format and limited hardback edition. It also features bonus content such as essays from well-known creators in the manga and anime industry. This is a must-have for any self-proclaimed mecha fan. It is from Vertical Inc. and there are currently three volumes available. The YA Novel Lover Adaptations of YA, or young adult novels, has become popular in the last few years and most have come from Yen Press. One of the best of these adaptations is Solace of the Parasol Protectorate series. It takes place in 19th century England in a world where vampires and werewolves live among humans and are monitored by the government. It is about Alexia Tarabati, a preternatural, or soulless, who has the power to negate the supernatural. She has to deal with inconsiderate vampires and other forces conspiring against her, all the while balancing a budding relationship with the werewolf Lord Connell Mekon. The series is filled with wit and humor, romance and danger, and Rem's art is fantastic. It is available from Yen Press, and there are currently three volumes available. The Fashion Lover If outrageous fashions and constantly changing hairstyles is the appeal for someone in your life, then consider Paradise Kiss as a series for them. It is about a group of college fashion students who find straight-laced Yukari, a high school student coasting through life with no real direction. It is a fateful encounter as it not only changes Yukari's view on her life, but she gets involved romantically with the group's flamboyant leader, George. The series was created by Ayazawa for a fashion magazine, so it is filled with different clothing styles as well as modeling all wrapped up in a romantic story. The ending was controversial for some, but I thought it was perfect. It is published by Vertical Inc. and is complete at three volumes. The Romance Lover There are a lot of romance manga out there but Alice in the Country of Hearts has managed to capture the hearts of a lot of readers. It is about Alice Liddell, who, while napping in her garden, is kidnapped by a man with rabbit ears and carried down a hole to Wonderland and forced to drink a potion. In order to leave, she must interact with all the people in Wonderland and refill the vial. As she interacts with the inhabitants, the Mad Hatter, the Queen of Hearts, and the Duke, they become fascinated with her and she starts to have feelings for them. But while every relationship is different... Only one will lead to love. I didn't think I would like the series, but it turned out to be one I really enjoyed. The ever-changing dynamics made it an interesting read, and the romance turned out to work even though I didn't think it would. The main series is published by Yen Press and is three omnibus volumes long. They also have an alternative take with My Fanatical Rabbit with the March Hare. Seven Seas Entertainment also has several of the alternate pairings. Check the show notes for links. The Comedy Lover There's a lot of comedy manga out there, but they can be pretty narrow in their appeal. Therme Rome breaks all of the boxes with a ridiculous premise that shouldn't work, but for some reason does. Lucius is a Roman architect of baths. When he slips in a bath and falls underwater, he is transported to modern Japan and their bath culture. Amazed by the flat faces achievements, Lucius tries to bring what he has discovered back to Rome to revitalize his home country's bath culture. Time traveling through baths sounds dumb at first, and the comparisons of bath cultures between Japan and Rome uninteresting, but Mari Yamazaki succeeds on both fronts to make a manga that is truly hilarious. There is no way to read this series and not laugh out loud at least once. It is published by Yen Press in oversized hardback omnibus editions, and two volumes are currently available. The Horror Lover If you know someone who likes mangled bodies and blood splattered everywhere, then consider Umi Neko When They Cry. The series is from the creator of Higurashi When They Cry and delves into more murder mystery locked room scenarios, but with plenty of blood and guts. People's faces are smashed in, bodies are charred to a crisp, and there's a perpetrator that may or may not be human. It's creepy and filled with lots of tension, finger pointing, and characters splitting up to make sure there are more victims. I love it. It is published by Yen Press, and there are currently four omnibus volumes available that could probably kill someone on their own. The Mystery Lover Sherlock Holmes has seen a resurgent in the last few years, which makes this title perfect for any mystery lover. Young Miss Holmes is a series that reimagines many of the great detective's exploits with the addition of Sherlock's young niece, who has an intellect to rival his. 
Each of the chapters takes on the story from the original Sherlock Holmes and adjusts them just enough to inject Christy Holmes, her gun and whip-toting maids, and her great Dane Nelson without destroying the integrity of the original story. This title can also double as a gift for a younger reader as it is rated for all ages. It is available from Seven Seas Entertainment and there are three omnibus volumes available. The Non-Sports Lover For the person who claims to hate sports, hand them a volume of Cross Manage. This series is about lacrosse, a sport that originated with the American Indians. Misora Toyoguchi loves lacrosse but isn't very good at it. She meets Sakurai, a boy who can't find a place to fit in since injuring his knee and can't play soccer anymore. Misora convinces Sakurai to be the manager of the school's lacrosse team, and he has his work cut out for him as he has to prove himself to the team as well as try to work on the problems that come up along the way. I love the series. It's the first sports manga I really liked. The characters are a lot of fun, and there's some great humor as well as dramatic moments. It almost seemed inappropriate for a Shonen Jump series, which is probably why it didn't last, but that just shows Japanese fans don't have the same tastes as U.S. fans. The series is published by Viz Media, and currently three volumes are available. For the Cat Lover It has become a tradition for me to recommend a title for the cat lover in your life. You know you have one. We are everywhere. Start with a happy ending might not sound like an upbeat title, but no cat lover will be able to resist it. It starts with a human dying, usually while helping a cat. The cat god comes to them and brings them back as a cat, giving them seven days to tie up any loose ends before they move on. It is a series of vignettes showing how different people use their time and how they can comfort those left behind as well as resolving their own regrets. It's fun and heartwarming and a must for any cat lover's bookshelf. It is published by Digital Manga Publishing and is complete in one volume. Thank you for listening to the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome podcast. You can find links to the stories and books discussed here in the show notes at manga.jdragononline.com. You can email me with any questions at xanadu at jdragononline.com or leave a comment on this post. Rate me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter at manga xanadu, all one word. Until next time, farewell from the Manga Dome.